Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. This is week 8, segment 1, and we are beginning our discussion of interprocess communication. Interprocess communication is of course something that we use all the time without ever thinking much about it, such as when we run a command and pipe the output into a second command. This flow of data from one process to another is a form of interprocess communication. In the last two video segments, we've also talked about signals and how they can function as a different type of interprocess communication, a way for one process to communicate to the other that a condition has occurred. So these two forms of IPC, pipes and signals, are vastly different and exhibit or support different aspects. Let's look at what forms of IPC we will consider. For starters, there's a difference between asynchronous and synchronous interprocess communication. During asynchronous IPC, the communication takes place without coordination, as we've seen with signals and as we discussed in our last two videos. But asynchronous communication also allows for a process to deliver a message and for a second process to consume it at a later point. That is, a process sends a message, time elapses, and then the recipient receives the message again without any coordination with the sending process. In contrast, in synchronous IPC, the sender and recipient are operating in a coordinated manner, and the message is received immediately. But interprocess communications may also be either unidirectional, as shown here where only one process can deliver a message to the other, with the receiving process having no means to send anything back to the sender, or the communication may be bidirectional, allowing for either party to send a message to the other. Communications between processes may sometimes only be possible if the processes are related, that is, they share a common ancestor process. A typical shell pipeline shows that all processes executing are ultimately children of the initial shell process, as we've seen before. The interprocess communications via the pipe are only possible because of this, and stand in contrast to what we've seen when we looked at signals, where any process may be able to deliver a signal to another process, provided they have the same effective UID. Finally, while we talk about inter-process communication, we also want to consider how processes on different hosts communicate with one another. That is, we will look at the APIs used to perform network communications, where instead of one process sending a message to another process, you now have a process on one host talking to a process on a different host, communicating over a network like the internet, which, as we all know, looks like a cloud. So, what are our options for two processes to communicate with one another? If you're on the same system, you can of course have one process open the file, write some data, and then have the other process open the file and read the data from it. That is, we'd be using the file system as an inter-process communications medium. This allows for asynchronous communications. There's no good way to notify the other process of new data being available, but it's bidirectional, either process can read or write. It allows for communication between related processes as well as unrelated processes, but it only works for processes on the same hosts. Well, you can communicate over the network if you use a network file system, for example, but it's not quite what we mean when we say that an IPC mechanism facilitates network communications. This method also allows for the exchange of variable data, meaning there's no real limit on what data you communicate. Signals in comparison are rather different. They are asynchronous in nature, unidirectional, allow communications between both related and unrelated processes, but of course do not allow communications across the network. On top of that, you're quite limited in the amount and type of information that you can relay. As we said before, all you can do is say, condition X occurred, and that's it. But there are a lot of other ways to perform IPC, and in the upcoming videos we'll be covering all of the following. We'll look at semaphores, which allow for asynchronous, unidirectional communications between related and unrelated processes on the same system, but the information we can relay is again very limited. 
In fact, semaphores are primarily used as a locking mechanism, but more on that in our next video. The next two IPC approaches are shared memory and message queues, which both allow for asynchronous, bidirectional communications between processes on the same system, but these two approaches, in this case, allow for variable data to be exchanged. Like semaphores, we'll discuss both of these two means of IPC in our next video. After that, we'll talk about our very good friend, the Unix pipe. Pipes require synchronous communications, are unidirectional. That is, a process reading from a pipe can't write data back to the other process through that same pipe. They require a common ancestor process and don't work over the network, in part for that same reason, but do allow for variable data to be communicated. Next, there's FIFOs, which are similar to pipes in that they require synchronous, unidirectional communications. But unlike pipes, they also allow unrelated processes to communicate. Although, of course, they remain bound to the same host. We'll also look at something called socket pairs, which have the advantage of allowing bidirectional communications of related processes on the same host. And finally, we'll cover the sockets API, which ticks all the checkboxes for synchronous IPC and which then can be used over the network to implement all the various systems on the internet, including layer upon layer other communication systems, like message queue services on top of TCP IP, for example. But before we go there, we'll cover what is known as System 5 IPC in our next video segment, semaphores, shared memory and message queues. So stay tuned and check out the next video in this series. Cheers!